module one, lesson 26, percent of a quantity. So a quantity is we are going to be given a number and we are going to have to find a percentage of it. For example, 40% of 17. So a percent, which is a part per 100 of 17. All right, learning targets. Um, I keep emphasizing this as we go through percents. Everything that we have done so far is, is part of percents. But in particular, we are looking at these unit rates, um, but we're looking at a per 100 instead of a per 1. And the strategies that we have used with ratios, in particular part to whole, we can use with percents. And we are doing scaling um, as we work with ratios of 3 to 4 and we scale them up to be 100. As we are reasoning about these comparisons and what happens if part of it changes, we are working our way into percentages. All right, so today's I can statement I can find a percent of a given quantity. So they give the quantity and I can find a percent of it. And I can find the whole when I am given a percent and the part the percent represents. So if they say that 40% is equal to 7, we can scale up using a variety of strategies and find out what is the 100%. So first example, five of the 25 girls on Alden Middle School's soccer team are seventh grade students. Find the percentage of seventh graders on the team show two different ways for solving for the answer and one of the methods must include a diagram or a picture model. So there are a few things that I want to reason my way through with this. Uh, first, are there 100 girls on the soccer team? The answer is no. But we are going to, as we work with the percent, in some way we're going to imagine if there were 100 girls on the soccer team, then how many of the girls would be seventh graders? You see, we have this ratio, this part to whole, 5 to 25, part to whole, and this represents the number that are the seventh graders, and this represents the whole team. So if I were to scale this up, if I were to expand the team, and this goes clear back to the first or second lesson we did with ratios, if I were to grow the team to be 100 players, how many of those would be the seventh graders? Now, because I have a ratio here, I have a fixed relationship. I know that the whole team is five times the number of the seventh graders. You'll remember we worked on finding the relationships, and so I would multiply the 5 times the 5 to get the 25, and I would divide the 25 by 5 to get the 5. So we're looking at that relationship between the parts of the ratio, and that relationship remains the same. So whatever number of girls I decide are on the team. In this case, because it's a percent, I want to scale this 5 to 25 up to 100. The relationship this way must remain the same. This 25 is 5 times greater than this. So if I take the 100 and divide it by 5, I would find out that there would be 20 girls. In the same way, I could show it like this, and we've done quite a bit of this. I've got five seventh graders per the whole team, and I want to scale the whole team up to be 100, so I multiplied times 4, and I multiply times 4, and I find out that 20. So if I have scaled the team up, 
to be 100 players, I would find that 20 of the 100 are the 7th graders. And right here, your brain should be screaming at you, hey, that's out of 100, that's a percent. So we would find that 20% of the team is 7th graders. I could similarly set it up as a table of equivalent ratios. I can say that I've got the 7th graders and I've got the whole team, 5 to 25. I could double and have 50, double and have 10. I could double again and have 100, double again and have 20. And now I've got A per 100, which shows me 20%. So I hope you notice on this example, I have shown you a lot of the strategies that we have already seen that involve scaling up to 100. I would also like to use shows a model because the instructions say that I should have a diagram or a picture model. And so I love, 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 love double number lines. For working with percents. And I'm going to designate this number line as percents, and I'm going to designate this number line as the number of seventh grade girls. Uh, you know, I think what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to have this be the whole team. And, and I'll show why here in a second. So I know that there is a whole team. And if I have the whole team, that's 100%. That's everyone. And I know that the whole team is 25 girls. So on my double number line here, I'm going to have 100%, and that is equal to the 25 girls. And that is why I decided this that I wanted this to be the whole team. So I could match something up to the 100%. Makes things easier. So now what I have to do is I have to do a little bit of thinking. If I know that the whole team is 25 girls, and I am just looking for five of the girls, then on my number line for the whole team, I need to have five. Because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for what is the percentage that 5 is equal to. Now, I don't have enough information on my number line yet to answer this question. I need to do a little bit of counting. And in my head, this is how my brain works, I'm thinking that I've got to count from 0, and I need to count to 25. But because I want to know what percent 5 is, I have to make sure that as I'm counting, that I land on that 5. And this is where your count buys or your skip counting come in handy. I want to count from 0 to 25, and when I count, I want to land on 5. So I'm going to count by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So I've taken my number line here, I've taken the team, and I've said I'm going to group them off in fives. Why in fives? Because I need to land on the five there. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Now when I do this, each of these corresponds or connects or goes with a number on the percentage number line. And at this point, I can look and I can see that my 100% has been divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 parts. 100% divided into 5 parts. Each of these is going to be equal to a 20%. So I'm going to count by 20s. 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Now I can analyze my double number line, and I can see that my 5 out of 25 girls is equal to 20%. And I could write a nice complete sentence answer here that 20% of the girls on the team are 7th graders. 
So I know that I've done this example about what feels like a thousand different ways. But it's important that we see that all of these strategies that we have used before for ratios and rates, we can use them for, per, for percents. And the same thinking as we think our way through, we can use that. All right, so taking a look here at example two. So of the 25 girls on the middle school soccer team, 40% also play on a travel team. How many girls on the middle school team also play on a travel team? So this time, I know the total number of girls, there's 25, and I know the percentage, and I am looking for the number that goes with the percentage. And all of the strategies that we have used so far, I could use. So if I were to look at a table, I know that I've got the travel team girls, the girls on the travel team. And I know that I've got the whole team. And I know that there are 25 on the whole team. I'm trying to find this number on the travel team. I know that the percentage for the whole team is 100. So if I scaled this up, I would have 100. And I know that if I took the travel team and scaled it up, it would be 40. It would be 40%. So I've got the travel team as part of the 25, and it has been scaled to be 40%. That's what the table shows here, is that we have this relationship set up. And we can look and we can say, well, we scaled by multiplying by 4. We took 25, we multiplied it by 4 to get the 100%. And so if I take this 40 here and then I divide by 4, so going back this way, I find out that the travel team is equal to 10 players. And I've done all of this using our table, using our scaling, and the relationships between all of these numbers. A little bit of thinking. A little bit of logic. Now, there's another way that I could look at this. I know that 40% is equal to 40 over 100. And I need to take the total team from this 100 and I need to scale it down to 25. So I divided by 4. So I need to take this 40 and I need to scale it down by dividing by 4. And I find that 10 of the 25 members are on a traveling team. I could also use my percent favorite, which is my double number line. I've got my percentage here. I've got the whole team. I know that 100% is the whole team. I know the whole team is 25. I know that I am looking for 40%. So once again, I need some more information. I need to count from 0 to 100. And while I'm counting, I really need to land on this 40%. I could count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And I can see that the 25 team members has been divided into 10 parts. So I have to take 25 and I have to divide it by 10. And I find out that each part is two and a half players. I would hate to be the half player. That could be very uncomfortable. 
There we go. And I see that the 40%, 10, 20, 30, 40, is equal to four of these parts. So I could take two and a half and I could multiply it times four and I would find out that 10 players are equal to 40%. Now I counted by tens, but I could just as easily have counted by twenties. 20, 40, 60, 80. And then I would find that each of these is worth five and I could do two sections and have 10. So it's important that we recognize that there's not always one way to count on the number lines. It is useful to, to think for a moment, to pause for a moment and ask what is going to be the most efficient. And by most efficient, I think to myself, what is the largest unit I can count by? Yes, I could count by ones from zero to 100, but not particularly efficient. 100 little marks there, a lot of work. I could count by tens, which I modeled, but I noticed that 40 is a multiple of 20 and 100 is a multiple of 20. So counting by 20s is very efficient. All right, example three. The Alden Middle School girls soccer team won 80% of its games this season. If the team won 12 games, how many games did it play? Solve the problem using at least two different methods. So we have a different situation here. I know that the 12 games is equal to the 80%. It says they won 80%. It says they won 12 games. So I have to use a little bit of thinking here and say, well, how am I going to scale this up to be 100%? Because that's the question that I have to ask, answer here. How am I going to scale this up? And I'd like to start with a double number line on this one so that we can kind of think our way through this. So I've got my percent, and I've got the number of games, and I know that they won 80% of their games, and I know that 80% is equal to 12 games. So I need to get over to here to 100%. So I have to find kind of what's missing here. So I'm going to go back to the thinking of the number line here. I need to start at zero, and I need to count to 100%. And when I'm counting, I need to make sure that I land on the 80% and I land on the 100%. Now I could count by ones, but 100 little marks is a lot of little marks to make. And I could count by tens, but I want you to remember that we should be looking for what is the largest possible count by that I can use. So hopefully your brain is kind of screaming at you, hey, these can be both divided by 20. So counting by 20 is probably a good call. So I'm going to count by 20. 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Now, when I did that, notice what happened to the 12. The 12 just got divided into four pieces. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So each of these is a 3. 3. 6, 9, 12, and that means that this piece is also a 3, which makes 15. So if 80% of the games is equal to 12, 100% of the games is equal to 15. So I can say that the Alden Middle School girls team won 15 of their, sorry, played 15 of their games. They won 80% of them, which is equal to 12. So I have done that all with a double number line. Now there is another way that I can think of this. I can say, okay, 80%, and that is equal to this fraction, 80 hundredths. I could scale this all the way down to the largest possible units. 
So I could say both of these are divisible by 20, and I could get all the way down to 4 fifths. So kind of what I'm doing here is thinking of my table where I've got my 80 to 100, and this is the number that they won, and this is the total number of games, and I want to scale this down as far as I possibly can. I want to find the ratio value, get it all the way down there. Divide them both by 20, and I've got 4 and 5. Once I've got the 4 and 5, I can say, now I want to scale up to the 12 games. I can multiply times 3 and have 12, and I can multiply times 3 and find out that it was 15. So in this approach, it is taking this ratio, this percent, this per 100, scaling it all the way down to the largest possible units. And once I have the largest possible units, then scaling back up to find the answer. So that's a two-step approach, but it totally works. And I want you to notice that all of these strategies require us to just stop and think about what's actually going on here. We're not memorizing steps. We are thinking our way through problems. All right, so exercise one. There are 60 animals, sorry, 60 animal exhibits at the local zoo. What percent of the zoo's exhibits does each animal class represent? So we've got mammals reptiles and amphibians, fish and insects, and birds. And we want to know the percents that are associated with each of these. So the first thing I probably need to know is what is the 100%? I need to know the total. So I'm going to total up the exhibits. 30 plus 15 is 45. 45 and 15 make 60. There are 60 total exhibits. So all of these are working out of the 60. So I am going to use the strategy of getting this down to the largest possible units and working from there. So I've got this 60 out of 100, and I want to get this to the largest possible units. I see these are both divisible by 20. And that will give me three fifths. Except I totally just did that not right. That information isn't going to be particularly useful. So I know that 60 percent. No, I know that 60 exhibits is the total of 100%. And here, I have 30 exhibits. So I know that 60 to 100, you know, I keep making this harder than I need to. Let me just back up here a second. I know the total number of exhibits is 60. And I know that I have 30 out of 60. So here is my number of exhibits. And I've set up my ratio 30 to 60. There. That feels much, much, much better to me. And I am trying to find out what percent this 30 is. So I need to do some scaling here. The 60 is equal to the 100%. So if I were doing my table, I've got my part and I've got my whole. I know that the 60 is the whole. I know that the 100% is the whole. I know that the 30 is the part. And I am trying to find what part goes right here. And at this point, I could use my scaling. I could take this right here, this 30 and 60, and I can scale that down. These are both divisible by 10, and that gives me a 3 sixths, and they're both divisible by 3, 
which gives me a 1 to 2. So I can scale all the way down to 1 to 2, and now I can scale up to the 100. And I can say that I will multiply times 50, and I will get 50 hundredths, which is equal to 50%. So on that one, I have used the scaling. I have gone and said, okay, I'm going to take this ratio of 30 to 60. I'm going to get it down to the largest possible units, a ratio of 1 to 2. And then I'm going to scale it up to be out of 100. So I know that the mammals are 50% of the exhibits. Now, on this next one, with the reptiles and amphibians, I know that it's 30. Sorry, I noticed that it's 15 exhibits. I know that 15 is half of 30. So I could take half of the percent here and have 25%. So using work that I have already done, I can answer this question. But I could go back to my scaling approach here. And I could say that I know that I have 15 out of 60. I can scale it down. I see these are both divisible by 5, which would give me 3 and 12. And I can see that these are both divisible by 3, so I can scale down to a ratio of 1 to 4. I can then scale up to 100. So multiply by 25, multiply by 25, and I find that I have 25%. So I hope you notice that there's a lot of power that comes from scaling down to the largest possible units. But I also want you to notice that there are some advantages to looking at the information you have. I reasoned that 15 is half of 30, and so half of 50 is 25. Now, by the same token, I can see that I take the 15 and divide it by 5 and 15 divided by, sorry, divide by 3, and I get, uh, boy, I am having a horrible time. I can scale the 15 down to 3. How do I scale the 15 down to 3? I divide by 5. How do I scale down by dividing by 5? So I find out that this is 5%. So 3 is equal to 5% because I have scaled down dividing by 5. Now, once I am at the 3, I can then scale up to 12 by multiplying by 4, and I can have 20%. So I got from 3 to 12 by multiplying by 4, multiply by 4. And if I add all of these up, I should have 100%. 50, 25 is 75, and 20 and 5 is 75. Not all problems are going to be that nice, but I, I couldn't resist the urge to show you how you can use a little bit of math logic to help you. So with the fish and insects, I could do the double number line. I know that 100% is equal to 60 exhibits, and I am looking for 12 exhibits. So I need to count from zero 260 and I need to land on 12. So 12, 24, 36, 48, and 60. So 12, 24, 36, 48, and 60. So I see that the 100 has been divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 parts. 100 divided by 5 is equal to 20. So each of these is equal to a 20%, and I can see that the 12 is equal to 20%. So the double number line totally works on these problems. I could do the same thing with the 3, but that's a lot. That's a lot of lines to be drawing. So I could use the double number line that I already have. I want to count from 0 to 12, 3, 6, 9, 12. 
And so the 20 then gets divided into one, two, three, four parts. Now, why did I count by threes? Because I'm trying to find three here. So three goes here, 20 divided by four. Each of these is worth five. And I can find out the three is worth the 5%. All right, so a sweater is regularly $32. It is 25% off the original price this week. Would the amount the shopper saved be considered the part, the whole, or the percent? So now we need to start thinking to ourselves what is actually going on with these percents. So tape diagrams are a great way to think about this. So I've got the total price, which was $32, and that is equal to 100%. And the 25% here is going to be the discount. So we're going to take some money off. So looking at the tape diagram, is the money saved, the discount, is that a part? Is it a whole? Or is it a percent? Well, the whole is 100%. The whole price is $32. The money saved is not a whole. We could say that the money saved is equal to 25%, but 25% isn't the actual dollar amount. This discount here has a dollar amount attached to it. It's equal to 25%. It is part of the whole, but really it is, it is a part. It is a part of $32. So we have some dollars of $32 that will be the discount. We have part of $32. So how much would a shopper save by buying the sweater this week? Show two methods for finding your answer. So we're trying to find how much money they would save. We're not asking for what is the new price. We're asking for the money saved. And it's important as we read the question to think about our answer and make sure we're giving an answer that answers the question. So I'm looking for 25% of the 32. And I cannot tell a lie, I love the double number lines. So I know that 100% of the price is $32. And I know that we're going to subtract 25%. So I need to count from 0 to 100%, and I want to land on the 25. So I'm going to count by 25s. 25, 50, and 75. So the 32 has been divided into four pieces. And 32 divided by 4 is 8, so I'll count by 8s. And I find that 25% is equal to $8. So a shopper would save $8 by buying the sweater this week. 25% of $32 is $8. Going back to the tape diagram here, so I've got my 100%, I've got my 75, sorry, 25%, I've got my 75%, I know that the total is $32, I know the discount is 8, and I also now know that the new price is $24 because 32 minus 8 is 24. So that's one method with the double number lines. I could also use my scaling approach. I could say that I know 25% is equal to 25 one hundredths. And I can scale that down, divide them both by 25, getting me to the largest possible units of one fourth. So I can take and say I want one-fourth of the 32. 
So the 32 is going to be divided into four parts because 25% is equal to one fourth. And I find out that each of these fourths is worth eight dollars and the discount would be eight dollars. Now at this point I can't resist the urge to show you that we were looking for one fourth of thirty two dollars. And when I look at that I see a multiplication problem because I see one fourth and I see multiplication of and we'll drop the dollars for a moment one fourth of thirty two. So there's part of me that when I work with percents, I see multiplication problems. I want 25% of $32. 25% is the same as 25 hundredths or 25 hundredths of 32. And that sure looks like a multiplication problem to me. All right, so a pair of jeans was 30% off the original price. The sale resulted in a $24 discount. Is the original price of the jeans considered the whole, the part, or the percent? So going back to my tape diagram here, let me reason my way through this. I know that the original price was 100%. I don't know the original price. I know that they took $24 off as the discount, and I know that that was equal to 30%. I don't know the new price, and I, well, and I do know the percentage. I, knew the new, I know the new price was 70%, because 70 and 30 is 100%. So the original price here, how much it would have cost before the discount? Well, I'm pretty sure that's not a percent over here. And I'm pretty sure it's not a part. It's the original price. It's the total up here. So I'm going to say that the original price is the whole, which is equal to 100%. So what was the original cost of the jeans before the sale? Well, let me do a bit of thinking here. First thing I could do is I could use some scaling here. Um, I could say that I know that 30% was the discount, and that's 30 hundredths. And I can scale that down to be 3 tenths. And I've got the 3 tenths, and I know that that needs to scale up to be a $24 discount. So the discount here needs to scale to be 24. So I must multiply times 8. And if I multiply the 3 times the 8, the 10 gets multiplied by the 8, and I get 80. So I find out that 24 is the discount, and 80 is the original price. So once again, I have used the scaling to get me down to a ratio value and then I was able to scale up until I had the discount amount so that I could find the total amount. Now, another way that I could do this is my favorite, double number lines. I really like the double number lines because I can see what is happening. With the scaling, it's a little bit abstract. It's hard to know for certain what's going on. So I know that I have the 100%. And I know that that's the original price. That's the amount that I am looking for. I know that there was a discount of 30%. And I know that that was equal to $24. So I need to do a little bit of reasoning here. And I need to ask myself, what am I going to put on my number lines? Well, I want to get to 100%. I want to count from zero. I want to get to 100%, and while I'm counting, I want to make sure that I land on this 30%. So I'm going to count by tens. 10, 20, there's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So I've got my percents here.
And something interesting happened when I drew my double number lines here. I see that my 30% has been divided into three pieces, which means the 24 got divided into three pieces. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. So I'm counting by 8s on this num number line. And I can see that when I count by eights, that 100% is equal to the $80. And of course, I could say 8 times 10 and get there much faster. But I love seeing what's happening here on the double number line. I love the reasoning that goes into this. So purchasing a TV that is 20% off will save $180. And we're going to name the different parts with the words part, whole, and percent. So 20% off is a percent. It's not an actual dollar amount. The $180 is a part. It's not the original price. It is part of the price that will be subtracted. The original price is going to be a whole. It's going to be the total of the original price. And if we look at the tape diagram, we can see kind of how all this fits together. The original price is a total, and it's equal to 100%. And the 20% off is this discount. And it's equal to 180 that means that I know this is worth 80%. So there are two pieces of information missing. What is the new discounted price and what is the original price? What was the original price of the TV? Well, I know that 20% is equal to $180. I just showed that on the tape diagram. So I could use my scaling approach. I've got my 20% is equal to 20 hundredths, and these are both divisible by 20. So I could scale this down and have one fifth. So I have this ratio of 1 to 5, and I need to scale so that my dollars saved here is 180. I need to scale that up to 180 so that I can find what is equal to the 100%? Well, I multiplied times 180. 180 times 5. And I'm pretty sure that I just found out that the original price was $900. So going back to the value here, recognizing that this one is equal to the discount and then scaling up to the discount amount and then scaling up to the original amount. Now I probably could have saved myself a step if I had looked real quickly and said this 20 is the discount amount and I want to scale that up to be 180 and just multiplied times 9 and then multiplied times 9, and I would have found 900. Double number line totally works with this. So I know that 100% is the original price, and I know that 20% is equal to 180. So I want to count from 0 to 100%. And I want to make sure that I land on this 20%. Now, these are both multiples of 20. How nice is that? So I can count 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Which means I will count by 180s here. 360, 540, 720, and 900. If I wanted to, I could scale down. I could have come down to 10% here, and then I would have seen 90s, 
and I would have multiplied up by 10 to get 900. All right, so main differences in the different solving strategies. Well, that is just a huge open kind of question there. Um, what the real difference is is simply how you are representing a problem. With scaling, you're being a little bit more abstract. You are leaving a lot inside your head and not necessarily putting it on the table. With a t double number line, you are putting down a lot of thinking, doing a lot of logic. So, you know, when we talk about the main differences, the main difference here is just simply how you're representing your work. Now, are there times when there is, you might prefer one method over another? Absolutely. That's why we give you all these tools in your toolbox so that you can think differently about each problem and you can pull the tool out of your toolbox and use it. How do the steps change when you were given a part instead of the total? Uh, you know, when, when we were doing those parts instead of totals, like we had the that last discount with the TV, 20% uh, was equal to 180. I had to look at this space here so that I could find the 100% out here. So the steps are slightly different in how you scale up or scale down and kind of the order that you do things. But in the end, you wind up with a correct solution. All right, so models and diagrams can be used to solve percent problems. Tape diagrams, 10 by 10 grids, double number line diagrams, and others can be used in a similar way to using them with ratios. I really hope that you can see as we did these problems that these are all strategies we used with ratios and we can use with rates so that we can find percents, parts, and wholes. So I can find a percent of a given quantity. So you could find 30% of 70. And you can find the whole. So you get a percent. And you get the part the percent represents. You can then do some scaling, do some reasoning, and find the whole. So back to the learning targets here. As we work with percents, we're definitely working with part to whole ratios. Uh, we have this fixed relationship, several examples I showed. Let's, let's scale this to the largest possible units and then uh, work from there. Um, definitely working with the equivalent ratios. Um, you know, we were finding 30 to 100 is equal to some number out of 24. And we're scaling all of this. So we are making comparisons and predicting what happens when these parts change. So I know that that's a rather long video, but this concludes Module 1, Lesson 26. Lots of stuff to think about. If you've got questions, make sure you talk to your teacher and make sure you complete your problem set.